Hey, welcome back to the channel guys. If you guys are new here, my name is Taylor. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you guys like this video. I upload videos regularly throughout the week, so make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on those. Okay, now today I'm going to tell you guys just a personal testimony of a time in my life where I was a Christian. I knew the Lord. I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I was on fire for him. And then trials came into my life, which caused me to backslide, right? It caused me to turn my back on God and kind of fall away from him for a season. And I want to tell you how complaining and bitterness leads into that kind of a mind state. So first I want to show you guys Lamentations 3 verses 17 and 18. And this kind of just explains how I was feeling during this time when I fell away from the Lord. So it says, my soul is bereft of peace. I have forgotten what happiness is. So I say, my endurance has perished. So has my hope from the Lord. So when I was 19 years old, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But before that, my teenage years, I had been a drug addict. And I'm talking a hardcore drug addict. And if you guys haven't seen that testimony video, I do have that on my channel. I'll link that down below for you guys so you guys can check that out. But this is kind of the next phase after that. So after I received Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, I was on fire for Him. Right? For... Years after, years after I was on fire for him, I was going to all sorts of conferences, I was reading my Bible, I was going to church, I had a whole bunch of Christian friends, and I was just really seeking him, right? And I was seeing him move in my life, I was seeing friends get saved, um, I was seeing him use me in other people's lives, I saw my whole life transform, I saw him transform my mind, transform my heart, and it was just a great season of my life, right? I didn't really have a whole lot of trials that I would consider major trials going on, and I was just kind of living in the spirit at all times, and it was awesome. Right now, later on down the line, I started to see trials and losses come into my life. Right, So first, I had a youth pastor who I was really close with. I would go to conferences with. We'd get lunch all the time. We would hang out. He's supposed to be a youth pastor of our church. And he pulled me aside one day and he said, hey, I'm moving. Right? I'm leaving. I'm going out of state. And I just felt kind of betrayed because this was like my first real close Christian friend. You know, he had discipled me. He had taken me to all sorts of these conferences, and I just felt really attached to the guy. So for him to just leave out of nowhere when he was supposed to be a youth pastor at our church and help me get something started there, help a ministry, I just felt a little betrayed by that. So that was kind of the first little strike on me. And next after that, I had a really good friend who I had actually helped lead him to the Lord, right? God used me in his life to lead him to the Lord. And we were really close. And I loved him. You know, he would spend the night at my house all the time. We would read together. We would worship together. He was just my best friend. We would do everything together. And eventually he told me he was moving out of state, right? So I started getting this feeling like, God, why is everybody leaving me? Like, why are you letting all these people, why are, my, why are my friends leaving, right? Why are my Christian friends leaving all these good friends that I had? Now, right after that, I had gotten into the music business and the music industry. And I was doing music with another Christian guy. And for me, music was my dream, right? It's not anymore. God moved my interest elsewhere, but for me, music was my dream. I love music. I loved everything about it. And so to be able to do music for a living and perform and write music and everything was a dream come true, right? I thought, man, this is it. This is what the Lord's called me to do. And I just fell in love with it, right? But I didn't realize it had become an idol in my life and I wasn't really putting God first in it, right? It was more about me. It was more about the music. It was about the band. It was about what we were doing. And I really wasn't putting God first, but I didn't realize that at the time. So eventually what happened was one of the main guys I was with left and he said, I'm not doing this anymore, right? We're not getting into details why, but he kind of fell off in a sin. And again, I was just like, Lord, what's going on? You know, you're taking another really close friend. And at the same time, you're taking this dream from me. You're taking just my absolute biggest passion and you're just setting it ablaze, right? And so I didn't understand that. I was like, Lord, like, what are you doing to me? Like, what's going on here? Now, at that same time where we lost the whole music deal, I was seeing this Christian girl, right? And we were dating, we were hanging out and everything like that. And I really liked her. I thought maybe, you know, maybe I could marry this girl. Like, this is cool. It's my first like, real Christian relationship. And I was like, well, I think she's the one. And I'd go to church with her. I would pray with her. And it was just, it was cool, you know? But the Lord took that away from me. You know, there's things that happened within that relationship. And I wasn't a godly man. And she wasn't a godly woman. And that just crumbled. And so... This led me to a place in my life where I was just bitter, you know, I was just angry and I just started complaining about everything and I just started saying like, Lord, why have you abandoned me? Like, what are you doing in my life? You're taking all these friends from me. You're taking my dream of a music career. You're taking this girl that I was in love with. Like, what are you doing to me, Lord? Like, what is the point in all this? So as a result of this, 
I stopped wanting to go to church because at my church, I was one of the youngest people there, right? We come from a very small church and we don't have a big youth ministry at all. We don't have a lot of people that were college age like me. We didn't have a lot of teenagers. And so I stopped wanting to go to church because I was like, Lord, I just can't relate to anybody here, right? There's nobody my age. I just can't vibe with anybody here. The messages is good, but I just like, I don't want to be here. You know, I'm not getting anything out of staying and hanging out with these people. So I would go to church, I would listen to the message, and then I would leave right away, right? And my heart started to harden. Now, at the same time, I stopped reading my Bible and I stopped praying because I stopped trusting in the Lord, right? I started complaining about my situation and all the things that the Lord had taken, and I just became really bitter and angry. Now, because I didn't have any Christian friends anymore, right? They had all moved away, they had all left. I started hanging out with my non-Christian friends again, right? I started to turn back to the world and I started to seek companionship with the wrong crowd again. Now this led me again into drug use. Now this wasn't the kind of drug use before where I was doing hardcore drugs, but I was smoking weed, you know, I was taking some prescription pills to help with anxiety and pain and all this stuff. But again, when you're trying to fill your life with things that are going to comfort you and bring joy, and it's not Jesus Christ, right? Those things lead to misery. Okay, there's no lasting joy and satisfaction in the world. Okay, so what happens? I became severely anxious and depressed because I was so empty. I had no Christian friends. I wasn't going to church. I didn't really have a relationship with God anymore. And I just fell into this heavy depression and anxiety. Now, I started to try and cover up this anxiety and depression with material things, right? I started to buy a whole bunch of expensive clothes and I would buy myself TVs and I would buy myself a whole bunch of stuff that just didn't matter. Right, because at the same time I had a new job and I was making good money, but again, it was just materialistic stuff, right? And I was working a job where I wasn't really serving the Lord, I wasn't glorifying Him, it was all about me, I was the man, I was in charge, and I just tried to fill my life with all these things that didn't matter, right? I tried to mask my pain and my anxiety and depression with drugs and alcohol, and at the same time I tried to fill this void in my life with material things, right? And nice stuff, and none of it lasted, right? I had this temporary joy and this temporary peace, and then it would leave, right? Because it wasn't from God. I wasn't living in the presence of God. Now, eventually I got to a point in my life where I was so down, I was so broken, I was so beaten up that I just started praying, Lord, if you're not gonna do something with my life, if you're not gonna use me, I need you to kill me. And because I had backslidden, I just did not have a reassurance of my salvation at all. And I had no desire to seek the Lord. No desire to seek the Lord. I just wanted the Lord to kill me. I had no desire to seek him, right? So I started praying, Lord, I'd be on my way to work and I'd pray, Lord, just kill me, right? Help me to get into a car accident today and help me to die. And I was like, help me to have some sort of quick sickness or something where I overdose or I just die instantly in my sleep, Lord. Like, help just kill me, Lord. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to live anymore, right? Take my life from me. But God was so merciful, right? He's so gracious and he used my sister-in-law to bring me back to him. Right? And he spoke through her to bring me back to him. Now, I have a video on this as well that I'll link in the description below. But God basically used this rapture dream my sister had to wake me up. right, And kind of shock me a little bit and scare me. And make me wonder if I was going to get taken in the rapture or not. right? And he made me kind of see that through this dream and through a series of events that happened afterwards, which I explained in that video, he still loved me. right? He still cared me. And his love was going to pursue me, right? Regardless of my love towards him and my feelings towards him, he still loved me and he still cared about me. And he was still going to pursue me and have mercy on my life and draw me back to him. Just know no matter how far you strayed from the Lord, no matter if you were once on fire for him and then you backslid or you fell into sin again, the Lord is faithful, right? The Lord is merciful and the Lord is loving and kind and he wants to see you come back to him. Right, I just made another video on what to do if you backslidden or what to do if you kind of walked away from the Lord. And it comes down to the prodigal son. Right, I was the prodigal son. And I came back to the Lord and he opened his arms up to me and he started blessing my life afterwards. Right, and I repented. I got on my knees and I was crying because I was just so overwhelmed that over the past couple of years of me just turning away from the Lord, he still loved me. Right, he still cared about me. He still wanted me in the family. Right, that just broke me down. I was like, God... I was just spitting on the cross over the last couple years, right? Taking for granted what your son Jesus did for me. I was just 
living in sin, not living for you, being completely disobedient, and I was bitter and angry and hostile towards you, but you still loved me. You still sought after me. You still brought me back towards you. And that crushed me. I got on my knees and I just repented. I said, Lord, I'm going to give up all these drugs that I'm doing. I'm going to give up smoking weed, right? Anything that is coming before you, I'm going to get rid of it. Anything that's an idol is gone, Lord. I said, everything that I'm using to try and get rid of my anxiety and depression is gone. Like I surrender it all to you. And I asked him, I was like, Lord, if I surrender this all to you, please heal me. Please heal me of my anxiety. Please heal me of my depression. And you know what? He was faithful. When I started surrendering everything in my life towards him and I started giving up all these things of the world that I was using to mask my anxiety and depression, he completely healed me of it. Brad and I had suffered from anxiety for years and years and years in my life. And when I fully surrendered my life towards him, when I said, Lord, there is nothing that I'm going to put above you to cure this anxiety, he blessed it, right? And he cured me. Okay, and I'm here to say that no matter how far you've strayed from the Lord, no matter what you've done, no matter how you think you betrayed him, he still loves you. And he still wants to take you into the family. And he still wants to just wrap his arms around you. And he wants to let you know that it's okay, right? He forgives you. He's going to continue to forgive you because you're going to continue to fail, right? But at the end of the day, it's a process of sanctification. And he who began on good work in you will see it through to the day of completion, okay? which means he's going to continue to sanctify you. He's going to continue to grow you. He's going to continue to make you more like his son, Jesus. And he's going to use all those trials, all those failures in your life to make you more like his son, right? He's going to continue to grow you in faith. And I'll tell you what, since I came back to him, since I surrendered my life to him again, I'm more on fire and more in love with him than I've ever been. Okay? When you're a believer, you get so caught up in all these feelings, right? When you're a new believer, you get so caught up in your emotions and your feelings and you're having all these experiences with the Lord and he's pouring out his spirit on you. But there's going to be a time and there's going to be a season where he lets you go through the valley, right? To really test your faith, to really teach you through trials and suffering that you need a full reliance on him. Okay, but he's also going to show you how loving and merciful and gracious he is. Okay, so put your trust and your faith in the Lord because he can restore you and he will restore you. Okay, but I want to show you guys in a biblical context about how complaining and bitterness will lead you to sin. Okay, and it will lead you into walking away from the Lord. Okay, so Satan, why did he fall from heaven? Because he was complaining. Right? He was bitter that he was not like God. He wanted to be like God. He was complaining that his position was not enough. Right? When Adam and Eve fell out of the garden of Eden. Why? Because they were complaining they couldn't eat from this one tree, right? God had poured out blessings on their life. God had poured out blessings on Satan, right? Allowing him to be in heaven. And God poured out blessings on Adam and Eve. They lived in perfect harmony with everything. There was no sin nor corruption. But the devil put complaining in their hearts to say, hey, why can't you eat from that tree? Why can't you be like the Lord, right? And complaining led them to the fall. Okay, when Israel was in Egypt and God delivered them out of Egypt, Right? They had seen all these miracles that the Lord had done. He had taken them out of slavery. And when they got into the desert, what happened? They started complaining. Right? They started getting bitter towards God. God, why would you take us out of slavery and put us into this desert? Right? Even though the Lord was bringing manna from the birds to take care of them, they were bitter. Right? They were complaining. And what happened? They died in the desert and they never made it to the promised land. Very few made it to the promised land. Because those were the ones that were faithful to the Lord. You see, the problem with complaining and bitterness is we forget what the Lord's already done in our life. Right? We forget what he's already changed in our lives and what he's already saved us from okay? and the ways that he's blessing us. And he doesn't like that. Right? He doesn't like when we don't trust in his plan. He doesn't like when we're not thankful in our situation in all things. Right? He wants us to remember what he's done, what he's going to continue to do, and to be grateful and thankful for those things instead of being bitter and complaining about what you don't have or things you wish were better. Okay? So this is how complaining and bitterness will lead you into sin. This will lead you into spiritual death in your life. Right? Where it's just you're not seeking him anymore. You start to seek the world again. You start to try and fill this void that God was filling for you. Right? So the Lord is faithful when we confess our sins to him to forgive us of all things. And no matter where you're at in your life, I'm here to tell you that he loves you and he's merciful. Right? He's still trying to reach out to you and let you know that. Don't suppress that. Right? Don't turn your back on him. Okay? Surrender your life to him and seek him again. Because this is the only way. Right? This is the only way to true joy and happiness here on earth. I just want to share that with you guys because your Christian walk's not going to be perfect, right? There's going to be times where you're going to fail. There's going to be times where you're going to mess up. You're going to fall into temptation. You might go back into the world a little bit. But guess what? The Lord is merciful, right? He is faithful and just to bring you back, okay? He loves you. 
And you just have to turn to him. You have to ask for forgiveness and surrender your life to him again. Okay? And he is faithful in all things. So God bless you guys. Again, if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe. We upload videos regularly. So make sure you guys don't miss out on those. Please also comment on this video. Please give it a thumbs up or a like. Because it does help our channel get out to more people. Right? So we can reach more people. That's the easy way to support. In a couple seconds, there's going to be a slide. If you guys want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's called the ABCs of Salvation. Check that out. God bless you guys. We'll see you guys next time.